This video is about C6, internal resistance. Now here is a circuit with a power supply, and the power supply has a potential difference across the terminals of epsilon. There is an ammeter in series with the lamp, the ammeter is measuring the current I, and the lamp has a resistance R. And so the current in this part of the circuit is also I, and we can say that V, the potential difference across the lamp, is equal to IR, and we can also say that epsilon is equal to IR. Therefore, epsilon equals V. But epsilon is the potential difference across the terminals of the battery, V is the voltage, the potential difference across the lamp, they're the same thing. And that assumes that the ammeter has zero ohms of resistance, and that the voltmeter has infinite resistance. But this isn't how circuits really are, because every power supply also has some internal resistance. We can represent that internal resistance on a circuit diagram with a small resistor near the power supply, and I'm going to use the lowercase r to mean the internal resistance. Sometimes, for clarity, a dotted line or a dotted square is drawn around the power supply to indicate that the resistor of the internal resistance is inside the power supply. Now, the equation V equals IR is still true. The current flowing through the lamp is still equal to the potential difference across the lamp divided by the resistance of the lamp. However, Kirchhoff's law tells us, Kirchhoff's second law, tells us that the uh, EMF, which is the potential difference across the power supply, is not actually the terminal voltage. That's the voltage across the terminals of the power supply. Uh, the EMF here, which I've given the symbol epsilon, is not the same thing as V. Why is that? Because we have something called lost volts. We have lost some potential difference across this internal resistor. Now, the potential difference across that internal resistor will be equal to the current through it multiplied by its resistance. And as the current through it is I, that means that the lost volts are IR, or I lowercase r, which I've shown by underlining it in green here. And so what we have is our EMF, gained from the power supply, subtract the voltage dropped across this lamp here, which is V, and also subtract the potential difference dropped across the internal resistor, which is I lowercase r. So that's just Kirchhoff's second law. Now you can rearrange this equation in any format you want. For example, V, the terminal voltage, that's the potential difference between the two terminals of the power supply, is going to be equal to epsilon, that's the EMF, minus these lost volts, IR, where R is the internal resistance. What this equation shows us is that when I equals zero, V equals the EMF. In other words, if I were to remove the lamp and not connect anything in series with this power supply, then the potential difference across the terminals of the power supply would be the EMF. And only when current is flowing do we lose volts in the internal, uh, in the internal resistance. This also tells us that if I were to replace the lamp with a variable resistor, then as I increase the resistance of that variable resistor, the terminal voltage actually goes up. And that's going to be for, uh, you can argue with this in two different reasons. You can either say the terminal voltage goes up because the current goes down and therefore the vo lost volts drops. Or you can say, using our potential divider argument, that the uh, load resistance R has a greater resistance share than the internal resistance. And therefore, because it has a greater share of the resistance, it gets a greater share of the available EMF which is why the load potential difference, or the terminal voltage, goes up. This explains why, when you connect lamps in parallel, you do in fact see a difference in brightness, despite the fact that, theoretically, there shouldn't be one. As you connect more lamps in parallel, the load resistance will drop, which means R in this diagram 
big R in this diagram is lower, and that means that the larger share of resistance is in the internal resistance, and therefore we have more lost volts. And as we have more lost volts, the terminal voltage goes down. So the voltage across each lamp drops, and therefore the brightness of each lamp drops. If there were no internal resistance, adding lamps in parallel would not change their brightness. But as we add lamps in parallel, their brightness does in fact decrease as you add more lamps due to there being more lost volts.